All right, let's take a look at the design of the user interface registers. The main concept I want revolves around the two push buttons. We use one as an up or increasing button and the other as a down or decreasing button. We have a value stored in the register. We have those two push buttons serving as the primary inputs. I also want the ability to suppress the operation of the buttons with an enable. And I also need the ability to give the register an initial value that's different than zero. Now the smallest register in LabVIEW is eight bits. Uh, for example, the unsigned eight bit data, integer data type. I only want to treat this as if it was a three bit register. So at some point I need to extract or somehow uh, extract the three bits or suppress the upper five, one or the other. So I'll begin by calling my register value eight to, rem to remind us that we're dealing with an eight bit value here. Sometimes we need to increment. Sometimes we need to decrement the value. And if the register is not enabled, then we just need to be able to keep the present value. All right, these three registers do nicely, or register transfer statements do nicely for us. I'll come back to the conditions here in a little bit. Let me talk first about how to actually think of this as a three bit register. I'll use the eight bit register, val or eight bit register value, anded with a particular bit pattern. This would be a type of bit masking technique, as it's called. This ampersand indicates a bitwise AND. It's a generic symbol for that. The hexadecimal constant 7, or 7 base 16, looks like five zeros and three ones when expressed in binary. If I add this on a bitwise basis to the 8-bit value, then the lower three bits are preserved and the upper five bits are all set to zero. So actually value is still gonna be an 8-bit value, but uh, only its lower three bits will actually do anything. So the up-down operation should only occur when the device is enabled. If it's not enabled, then it simply preserves the presently stored value. Need to make just a little bit of space here. Kind of shuffle things around a bit. Now, when the up button is pressed, potentially it's gonna be pressed for a long time, certainly longer than what we would consider to be one clock cycle or even one sampling interval. So I'm really more interested in seeing that leading edge. So at some point I need to form a modified signal called the up edge signal. And then we could also form a similar one for the down button called down edge. I'll also point out that we can use this same exact structure for the rotary knob encoder, realizing that the A and B waveforms that are produced when you rotate that knob look something like this. When we rotate to the right, we see this characteristic pattern of transitions. When we rotate to the left, we see this characteristic pattern. Turns out that if we detect an edge on the A waveform, or the A signal, while B is low, that tells us that we just rotated one click to the right. Similarly, if we detect an edge on B, while A is low, that tells us that we just did a one click rotation to the left. So as long as I remember that A is equivalent to the up signal and B is equivalent to the down signal, and I'm already looking at edges here, I can say that the low requirement can simply be added by saying that the down button must be low. So those three things all need to happen in order to advance the, the value. In a similar way, we say that up has to be low 
when we detect a down or we detect an edge on the down signal. All right, let's briefly review the LabVIEW implementation of this. This is the VI called UI register three bits. Here we see the feedback node implementing our register that I'm calling value eight. We've got the plus one and the minus one happening right here. All of the conditions are taking place in this area. And this sub VI, which is a built-in device, Let's see if I can pull that up here. This is the one that's called Boolean crossing. This one detects the edge and specifically it's detecting a low to high transition. The bit masking concept happens right here. I take my value, turn that into an eight bit array. Same thing with hexadecimal seven, do a bitwise and and use that to produce my finished eight bit result.